Thank you very much for the introduction. Um, sorry for my bad English today, even worse than usual. Uh, the, the topic is really a hot topic. I hope I can do my job here. So I have no significant, uh, no, no relevant disclosure related to this topic. And I start saying that, maybe here, I start saying that for generalized diverticulitis resection surgery, uh, resecting the sigma tract uh, involved by diverticula is the treatment of choice since Hartmann's procedure. And the Hartmann's procedure is the standard since decades today. Henri Hartmann, actually a Frenchman, a French surgeon and maestro like the one I have in front of me today, uh, described this procedure in 1921 at the 30 Congress of the French Surgical Association in Strasbourg. He stated that preservation of a small rectal sphincter rectal sac did not present any inconvenience. This was related to the fact that so far only mild procedures were performed for rectal cancer with about uh, one third of mortality and Hartmann procedure um, decreased this mortality to less than 10%. But he specifically advocated that the patient should not undergo restoration of intestinal continuity. And this is what we are discussing today after 100 years. Although others attempted such a procedure and specifically two Swiss surgeons had reported seven years later about the reconstruction early after the introduction of the procedure. The historical and clinical importance of this procedure at that time cannot be overstated. In obstructive colorectal cancer and in perforative diverticulitis, this was solidified in the surgical psyche after the seminal paper by Krukowski in 1984, I'm sure you've been through. He stated that when operation is necessary, the affected sigmoid loop should be resected and the operation completed has a Hartmann procedure in all but the most favorable circumstances, circumstances when a primary anastomosis may be considered after on-table irrigation of the colon. However, we know that restoration of bowel continuity after surgery, after Hartmann procedure, is entailed by a very high rate of non-reversal and a very high rate of complications when reversal is attempted. 60% and 30% about respectively. And this is why this has led to the suggestion of resection with primary anastomosis as an alternative approach with or without a covering galeostomy. Already in 1984, the same year of the uh, paper by Krakowski. It was 2013 where my friend Roberto Scirocchi in a systematic review and meta-analysis stated that primary colonic resection with anastomosis versus Hartmann procedures Procedure reduces overall mortality rate, but this included mainly retrospective studies and only one prospective study by my friend Gian Andrea Binda. This is why in preparation of this uh, presentation, which stressed me a lot, I tried to reproduce this data today, updating the literature, and I found that actually three randomized trials are available today. These three randomized trials are published in 2002 and, and, and 12 by Gian Andrea Binda, 2012 by Oberkofler, and in 2017 by uh, Valerie Bridou. Primary outcomes are fortunately very similar in the three studies. Basically, uh, they consider mortality and, mor and morbidity. The assumptions to calculate the sample size is very variable, astonishing to me. This produced a very different sample size, 600 patients in the study by Binda and 136 by Oberkofer, the two limits. But what it is more interestingly is that of about 1,000 patients that should have been recruited for the studies, only 254 actually were, which means only 25% of the patients, astonishing. All the three studies were prematurely interrupted for difficulties that we know that we routinely experience when we do randomized trials in emergency setting. What it is even more ugly is that 25 centers were included in the three studies, which makes uh, an average of 10 patients per center. Really, really uh, little number. The inclusion criteria were more or less the same in the three studies. Only in 3 and in 4 uh, patients were included. The quality assessment of included studies showed actually a quite good uh, um, quality in all the three, if not for blinding, which in these cases is more or less impossible, and for control or for confounding, which was not available in none of the study that, that presented. I don't want to go into too many details here about characteristics of patients. You have to believe me. First of all, the studies enrolled patients between 2001 and 2012, which is quite a long range uh, of years. But you have to believe me when I say 
that the patients were really homogeneous for sex, for age, for BMI, for ASA score, for Hinchy stage, for MPI score, for the first surgeon being a resident, which is quite characteristic, up to 50% in the, in the paper from the, the French center, uh, for surgery performed during night, for C-reactive protein evaluation, so that the characteristics of the included uh, studies uh, of the patients in included studies are very homogeneous in my opinion. But none of the studies define the permanent stoma, which is one of the key points that we are trying to address today. So all patients who did not have bowel continuity restored were followed up for at least one year, and the four stomas not reversed within one year of the index procedure are considered permanent stoma for the purpose of this analysis, which I don't know if it is correct, but this is the only thing that I could assess. The surgical procedures were not standardized. I have to admit there, were, there was considerable heterogeneity in the use of a covering stoma because despite what the protocol stated, in the, in the primary anastomosis group, all patients in the study by Binder received a covering stoma, but only 46% in the study by Bridou and 30 in the study by Oberkofler, which is quite interesting also. This is because everything was left in the hand of the surgeons that was uh, uh, free to decide intraoperatively actually how to modify the protocol no matter what the randomization stated. Let's have a quick look at the, at the results. Postoperative hospital mortality rate after the in index intervention was slightly in favor of uh, primary anastomosis, but no significant difference could be detected. And this is also in, including the stoma reversal operation, as you see. Permanent stoma rate, defined as before, was clearly much less reported in the, in the primary anastomosis group. But again, we could not see any significance here, which in my opinion is strictly related to the fact that only 82% received, uh, sorry, that 82% received the stoma reversal in the primary anastomosis group compared to only 60% in the HATMA procedure group, which is, in my opinion, a little bit of a burst percentage due to the fact that these are randomized patients so that surgeons were pushed to reverse these patients, to the, the stoma to these patients, more than they would have done probably if those patients would have not been randomized. Um, overall postoperative morbidity rate was almost the same in the two groups, even when you restrict the analysis to uh, more severe complications. And this is the same also when you include stoma reversal operation, again, restricting only to most uh, severe complications, you don't find any significant difference. But interestingly, postoperative intraabdominal abscesses were about one third in the in primary anastomosis group compared to Hartman procedure, which is something I have no idea exactly to why we, we, we observe this. But this is the only significant difference that could, could be found in the data that we analyzed. This is a list of the overall complications. They mainly entail interabdominal abscesses, occlusion, wound infection, abdominal wall dehiscence, and of course, some respiratory uh, complication. The operative time at index surgery was not surprisingly in favor of the Hartman procedure of about 30 minutes which thing was completely reversed when you include also the stoma reversal procedure. Although here you don't see a significant again, but again, should it be more related to the fact that only 80 patients with the Hartman procedure altogether could be analyzed in this? No difference was shown in the intensive care unit stay, uh, considering both operations, same for the hospital stay and exact equivalence between the two groups. So I come to some discussion about this data in an estate. The, AC, the ASCRS in 2014 stated that following resection, the decision to restore bowel continuity must incorporate patient factors, intraoperative factors, and surgeon preferences, which is also one of the bias of all the studies that I illustrated so far. And similarly, uh, Great Britain and Ireland Association for Coloproctology and Royal College of Surgery in the same year stated that both Hartman procedures and primary anastomosis, with or without the covering storm, are potential options, and the decision as which to utilize should be made on an individual patient database, which was clearly stated also yesterday in our, in our um, uh, consensus. Now I drop here some of my doubts, my concerns. Despite reversal of the uh, Hartman procedure is viewed by most surgeons as a more complex procedure, 
when compared to closure of a covering ileostomy, I have to assess here that cumulative morbidity and mortality were almost similar, almost identical in the two groups so far. Surgeons, patients choice, uh, surgeons and patients' choice are definitely a bias here. The tendency for sicker patients to have a Hartman procedure is a recognized phenomenon, and we cannot fight against that, and this will always be. Um, clearly, there is a role for the fact that we did not have the possibility to have a blinding, and what about quality of life of these patients? We never considered this option. So our conclusion were that primary anastomosis and Hartman procedures seem to be equivalent in terms of most outcomes of interest, with the lower intra-abdominal abscess rate after the incus procedure favoring primary anastomosis. However, given the significant limitation of the included RCTs, these findings may not be applicable to all patients presenting with perforated semiodiverticulitis and generalized peritonitis. And there is a need for well-designed and implemented randomized controlled trials with sufficient statistical power to address this question, which was not done so far. Shortly about the consensus of yesterday, uh, Pat uh, and uh, another Francis did really a great job, and it was really a privilege to be part of it. So the consensus stated that in inch 3 diverticulitis, sigmoid resection with primary anastomosis and proximal diversion has similar mortality, lower morbidity, and lower stoma rate at 12 months compared to Hartman's procedures with reversal. The recommendation that followed is that uh, the expert group, group rated a strong recommendation that in the appropriate clinical setting, sigmoid resection with primary anastomosis and proximal diversion should be considered over Hartman procedure in patients with inch 3 and selected cases of inch 4 diverticulitis. And this was largely agreed by the, by the attendees, by the, the, the um, people that replied to the uh, to the survey that is still online, and I invite everybody to contribute as long as uh, this will be on, which is at least till the London meeting of the AIS. And of course, the same people stated that either they already do this or they are going to change the practice in favor of that. Um, the, our exit group also made a strong recommendation that uh, Hartman procedure should be the preferred operation for hemodynamically unstable patients with perforated diverticulitis. That is also what they stated that they already do routinely. And then we had, uh, the, we paid attention, this is very, two, two, two more slides and I, and I conclude. Uh, we paid a little bit more of attention on what, which other alternative we have. And we considered the possibility of damage control surgery. And uh, we stated that in unstable patients with perforated diverticulitis, this, damage control surgery defined as resection without anastomosis, temporary abdominal closure, and second look has acceptable morbidity and mortality as well as lower stoma rates. And so we recommend that damage control surgery strongly uh, should be considered in unstable patients with perforated diverticulitis with a large agreement in the survey that probably derives from something that we discovered already three and a half years ago, again with my friend Chirocchi in a large meta-analysis uh, systematic review and meta-analysis of uh, uh, very heterogeneous uh, uh, papers uh, published at that time, including limited resection uh, of involved colon using staplers without colostomy, and on the other side, lavage and drainage without resection, and concluded that despite the heterogeneity of patients and groups and settings, intervention, damage control surgery appears to be a promising strategy for the treatment of inch 3 and 4 diverticulitis complicated by septic shock. So the final conclusions are that the evidence is extremely low, despite three randomized controlled trials, as all of them were prematurely terminated. The impression is that when Hartman procedures is, is extensively reversed, you get into a lot of troubles, and therefore primary osmosis should be preferred when possible, but this could not be clearly demonstrated whether the role of damage control surgery should probably be better investigated in the near future. I thank you very much.